What's up? I'm Grizz. Welcome. Episode one of season two of Mashoko Tensei. I'm very, very excited to finally get back into this. Finally, episode one. Last week having our, our prequel episode zero, which is pretty fun and, and interesting for the most part. And I, I actually really like the the approach that they went and really appreciated uh, of being able to learn and build some of these characters and, and things within this world a little bit more uh, while not having to follow Rudy, but also be able to do it before we have to actually introduce them. So we already have kind of an idea and we can skip over needing to give flashbacks or backstory about certain things because we have some understanding at a, at a basic level at least surface level of what these characters are so i thought that was a really cool way of them to kind of introduce and do this now i'm very excited to finally be able to follow rudy again and his journey for however long he was gone after season one wherever he went afterwards as well in his broken depressed state that he was in so i'm excited to see kind of where he heads from here i expect to meet up with sylphie at some point uh maybe not just a mutual thing more of like a he finds sylphie or Sylphie finds him or whatever the situation might be. I expect that to, to happen and us to reconnect at some point. I think it'll be like two or three episodes in before that happens though. I think this first one at least is going to strictly be Rudy where he goes afterwards and his real journey of being alone for the first time. Uh, and really forever, I guess, throughout the series of him actually venturing out by himself. While in the past before, he's always been under the impression or always had things, uh, whether it was when he got kind of kidnapped or taken away, uh, brought into that village in prison at that time, he, he still had people out there that he had hopes for that would come find him or like things that he can go back to. Now he doesn't necessarily feel the same exact way, uh, but we're also on the quest to find his mom because that's the most important one. She appeared to be like underground in like a fucking crystal thing or something along those lines. So I have no clue how he's going to even find that or begin to, to look for her there. But I'm assuming that's going to be a majority of where we focus and, and head over the season, as well as just, you know, how we reconnect with Sylphie and everybody else along those lines. Uh, also, are we going to be able to, because Eris seems to be out of the picture, at least for the foreseeable future. So are we also going to reach out and attempt to find Roxy on our own as Roxy's already found us and decided, ah, I don't need to like worry about him too much. Is he going to go and do the opposite of that and try and look for her at some point? What exactly his next approach is here? I'm rather curious especially how he bounces back after completely breaking basically by the end of the last season. So I'm, I'm curious how, how he's going to handle himself here. Uh, if we have to meet people along the way to kind of rise our spirits a bit and get us moving and taking that next step forward, or if this determination of finding Zenith and everybody's going to be enough for him to be able to do it. I talked a little bit more about first impressions and things regarding the season and stuff in the zero video. So go check that. I'm not going to repeat myself on all of that. Uh, the first couple of minutes, at least of that, if you're curious at all, if this video has no sound for the anime reaction portion of this, at least the, the audio from Shoko Tensei itself, please check the description. There'll be a, a link to something in there where you can click that, watch it full opacity and everything. I only do that because Toho absolutely hates me and blocks me every time that I upload a video using any of their sound. And they're the worst about it too because they don't immediately do it. They wait until Sunday night every single week and then they absolutely just bomb me with it and I get screwed. So basically I can have the video up for, if I put it up on the Monday, I can probably have it up for a week before it goes down, but it doesn't work as well when I'm doing something like JJK and that goes up on like a Friday. I only get like a day or two before they would end up taking it down. I'm working on some steps to kind of get around that. I have an absurd amount of videos posted right now that are all unlisted of me testing different ways to kind of get around it. Uh, so as I'm recording this on Sunday later tonight, I'm assuming I'm going to get destroyed with a bunch of strikes. So if I don't even have a channel tomorrow, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to do what I can here, but I'm assuming all of those are going to get blocked. And if they don't, then we might've found the fix and a way to kind of get around this. How will the other reactors do it? I don't know. I might have to reach out and, and hopefully somebody can kind of help me. Uh, but if any of you know, please leave something. I, I would love to know because I'm absolutely struggling. But if there is audio and it's fully in this section here, I just know I did it and it, everything worked well. Or at least I believe I did it. And we might find out a week from now that it doesn't actually work. So I guess we all still have to play everything by ear, but we're going to try. Anyways, there should be something in the description regardless. With all that out of the way, if you like it all, the like and subscribe do mean a lot to me. Feel free to stick around for the discussion after this reaction portion, as well as if you click the link in the description at all, please come back and watch the discussion. And if you don't do that, just at least leave a comment or a like or something for me. I spend a lot of money just to keep the videos up on that that site and I don't make any money doing any of this stuff. So it would mean a lot. Make my efforts feel worth it at some point, you know? Anyways, very excited. Let's get going. Mashoko Tensei season two, episode one. Blonde woman. I think. 
He hitched a ride with somebody? That's a vibe. Good for him, dude. Respectable, at least. It's a cool way to just flash it out like that instead. Instead of making it as grand. So looks like we got three serious people and three people who just could not be bothered. <laughs> you asked about me? It's okay to speak about myself? No. Yeah. I'm just saying, the girl to your left does not strike me as a bodyguard either, so... Or adventurer. Hmm. They're similar as in her and Eris. Hmm. I don't really want to talk about that right now. Yeah, now, now you got nothing to say, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's no more reason to be rude, yeah. Neither person's wrong here. <laughs> Shit, I'll search and I'll search. There's gotta be a clue somewhere. Uh, I'm pretty strong. Not really. I guess. Yeah, buddy's broken still, dude. I didn't. I probably should get a notebook and paper if I want to start remembering shit, but... We're a little too far in and I don't know where I'm going to find one. So right now, no. Maybe next. <laughs> That's pretty. A lot of the... We haven't even seen a lot so far, but the, the tiny bit of scenery that we've seen looks significantly better than the episode zero. Is that enough? <laughs> Window from the, uh, the ED, right? The old one? Second one? Something like that? Yeah, <laughs> he's like, I'm just gonna lay here for a long while. I kept the hair. Buddy, I understand, but that's rather creepy. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. At least you get it. He definitely looks a little bigger. A little lanky, you know? Mm. You want to hold on to it, though. You don't want to give that up, do you? Mm. It's a big step to do, though. Did he hold on to it, or did he get, like, something else? Or did they just use that to figure out what his party was? <laughs> I got this. this. <laughs> さっさと受けさせろよ。だろうだ、バディ。もうどうにでもなれ、死んでもいいやって顔だ。そこでどうだ。That's <laughs> Sometimes you need to rely on others or use the help of others. Oh, look at that guy. He looks similar, doesn't he? <laughs> More than probably all of you. <laughs> You'll work perfect with me, then. <laughs> Person on support, except he's probably stronger than every single one. <laughs> She could have other stuff going on though that she's not playing. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but a replacement isn't a good thing, so don't get too close, you know? He keeps reaching in there, and I'm not sure if I'm supposed to know what he has in there, but I don't. Like, huh? <laughs> But these two didn't say a word or have a reaction to it. Do they know somebody who can as well? Don't shake your hand, huh? So who's our leader? Ah. 
You're just our decision maker, but the other lady keeps us all in fucking order. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Well, shit, if I'm the reason that somebody else gets killed, I probably deserve it, don't I? It's not, it could happen, but it doesn't mean that we are. Mm. You have some growing up to do, so. Yeah, it works. <laughs> it's not ideal, but it works. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even pick up on Galen being like that. Yeah. Cool. Damn, we got all the corners covered. He's still not eating. Mm. What am I gonna do though? Yeah. Sarah's one of those characters that you hate now, and I bet, like, she'll come around and everybody's gonna be like, oh, she's so great later, you know? Unless she, like, fucking dies in the next, like, two episodes, then not. <laughs> but also having the idea of how Eris was early on, it's, it's a little different, you know? Mm -hmm. She needs something to fucking knock her down. Oh? But it could help you find ones that are still alive. But he's like broken right now, so he's not going to look at things optimistically. But I'm just saying. But she enjoys being in battle. Wow. It's like a copy. <laughs> Huh. Well, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> nice. Nice. I fuck with this guy. I drew notice. <laughs> like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Oh, those are big, dude. Oh, they're all roided up. Oh. <laughs> That's why they look all chunky. Never mind. <laughs> nah, he's got a fight, though. Yeah, mine as well. Let them come. Nah, 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 nah. Help you. Yep. People willing to sacrifice themselves for you in a way. Even though they're not technically sacrificing yourself. But others who are willing to fight. All together. It's not a soul man thing. I like the, the dynamic between the group. Oh my god. Be careful. Oh, that's cool. I really like those. Mm. Let's take the step forward. There you go. They did what they could. Now you have to help them. They protected you. <laughs> it's your turn. Mm. Media voice change. They're like, what the fuck is this? That's so cool, dude. Gotta skin these motherfuckers. Damn. No, 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 that's not how that works. 
てきてもらってよかった、うん、ありがとうございます She feels bad now. She was like, Oh, you're fucking ass at what you do, huh? Yeah. Mm. Mm. The outsiders come in and steal your fucking jobs. They took our <laughs> Yeah. Mm. There you go. That's a good way to buy everyone over there. Like, all right, cool. <laughs> Win them all over by that, all right? <laughs> Put his name on the map. A real name this time. Finally see. Oh my god. Not treating everything like it's a fucking game. Not even a game, but like just completely giving up and having purpose. Miss mm. Roxy? Uh, just think about everything that you've had. Yeah. Everything that you've gained from coming to this world. Mm. This is just another lesson in that. Yeah. Yeah. And don't take those things for granted. Right. Right. Perfect. Perfect. Mm hmm. Take such a big event for some of something like that, and you perfect, perfect, dude. Mm hmm. Typically, these types of of moments, or or within a story of of a character growth, or a person being able to move past something, or realize that there's there's greater things out there, or things that are still there for them uh, that they want, or that they should be more focused on uh, instead of being so gloomy or feeling like there's no purpose or value in their life, or there's nowhere left for them to go. Right? These are are big revolutionary moments for the most part, and I absolutely love, especially when stories strictly <laughs> dive into this uh, within a character and a person really growing but i absolutely love when we we go this route and we play a bit more into the mindset and and what a character is really feeling uh and the ways that they're going especially if it's portrayed similarly to how it was in this this episode uh of a character that it feels a very real feeling in a way minus the whole i gotta go find my mom part the idea of rudus kind of separating himself and feeling this void almost like he has nothing after having to lose eris similarly to in a breakup with somebody where you're struggling and stumbling over yourselves in a way to find that next step or that next place for you to go it gets you questioning things if you have this opportunity to ever find somebody like that again or be in that position again more so in context of the show here putting itself as rudy being like i'm continuously losing things as time goes on i'm losing things over and over and over to the point that I'm gonna have nothing here. What's the point of me constantly putting up with it? Everything's gone at this point. Eris is finally gone. That was like the last thing he felt like he really could hold on to was he's been with her for so long as she was such a impactful and important person in his life. He completely loses it to the point that he begins to sacrifice himself. It almost seems like right? he gives up to uh, at a certain point. Not understanding why these people are jumping in and trying to protect and fight in, in what they're kind of really living for. He doesn't see that purpose or that that reason within them. And he kind of just wants to give up and feels like this, this should be the end. It's all over for him because it's all downhill from here. But being able to have that revolutionary moment of understanding in, in a remembrance almost of what being with Dead End and everybody else within the party was like and being able to experience the joys of adventuring and creating bonds and friendships through this and meeting new people and, and the different experiences and things that you can learn is truly something special that if you kind of keep your head down and you, you submit and give up to that now... You're not going to have anything left. You're robbing yourself of, of having all these opportunities. I mean, literally because you'd be dead at that point. But the way that he's moping around and acting now, he's taking these experiences and the, these ideas that he can have, these, these, these new experiences and everything are just wiped out. You're not going to be able to get any of these opportunities because of the way that you are. Because you don't have that mindset to take that next step forward. You don't have that mindset of stepping out and actually committing to the thing that you're saying, constantly using uh, finding his mom as an excuse for why he's even going here and like moving forward. Well, it is, and it's not a lie that that's what he's trying to do. He actually is. 
but it's more of like a, I need to convince myself that this is something that I really want to do here in order for me to actually go out of my way and do it. When he still has so many other things that he has to kind of heal. He's in like a mindset of like, the world doesn't stop for anybody. I guess I just got to keep going along while he's still hung up behind. So regardless if he takes a full step forward, it's almost like he's kind of stuck in place at the end of the day and he's not really going anywhere. So being able to have such a grand moment of him being able to experience this, this thrill again and this understanding almost that he needs to kind of go out of his way to understand that there's still people and things out there for him. There's still places for him to go and people to to see and reconnect with, specifically holding the thing regarding uh, Sylphie and being like, we're very far from each other, but we're, we're, we're going to get together at some point. There's still people alive that, that are out there that you haven't even confirmed at that point. You don't, he doesn't actually even know where Sylphie is or that Sylphie's alive or anything, right? He's under the impression that she's alive, but he doesn't know for a fact. By ending it all now, you're robbing yourself of that opportunity to ever reconnect with her, ever reconnect with your mom, who's had such a, a impact on you too. And him finally being able to come to that realization to be able to take that step forward, being able to take Eris's hair and throw it in the fire and basically realize this is it. Like I, I need to, in a way, it's a way to signify him moving forward and moving past her, but also the fact that this idea that he has in his head of who she is and the the things that they've experienced and been through together is the thing that's kind of holding him back, uh, not allowing him to take that step forward and really do what he needs to and really find that value and purpose within himself and his life, that the real first step here is to move forward here. That's why you see so many times in different shows where like somebody needs to move forward, but they, they're hung up on somebody or like an object to that person from the past in a way. And that's why whether it's a picture or like a, a necklace or like whatever it is, they kind of cut it up or they, they throw it away or they throw it in the water or something so they can completely get rid of it and they have nothing left. Similarly to burning the hair hair, we got to wipe the slate clean in a way because I have, I have more important and pressing matters here than to sit back and be depressed continuously and focus on that. And I, I absolutely love the way that they kind of presented that and fully brought a revelation within the entire episode of being able to introduce where he's stuck at and introduce kind of where he's having his turning point in a way, despite this not being a turning point. But it is, it's kind of a turning point of understanding that I have shit that I have to fucking do and I need to be alive. People, people almost need me in a way. Your mom might end up needing you here. You might need to be the one, which I'm assuming that he's going to be to go out and find your way to save her. Your wife wanted, you're needed. This isn't your past life anymore. This isn't that you have the opportunity to right all your, your wrongs and all your regrets and mistakes and stuff. And you've done so many so far with so many different things, specifically him being able to, to put it into perspective of the lessons that he's learned over time and him being like, oh, it would be like a disservice almost to the, these things that I've done. It'd be disrespectful for me to kind of throw all this out the window and just kind of sit back and mope around and do nothing and not apply those into what I can do and what I can can improve upon myself next. I absolutely love stuff like that. I, I think it's so cool for us to be able to do it. And the fact that we were able to effectively do it so, so well within one episode, I think was, was really fantastic. I think the opening introduction here really makes things kind of apparent uh, where Rudy's at, especially being able to meet Sarah here, who specifically <laughs> is like an heiress copy. I'm not saying that they're exactly the same, but I'm saying that they're they're, they're similar enough to the point that even Rudy takes notice multiple times that this is the case. And him also being asked at multiple times too, when they were like, oh, why exactly are you traveling? What would you, would you like to hear this? Would you like to do that? And him just being like, is there really a point to any of that? Almost giving up already at this point, just by continuously using this reason of I'm going to, to save my mom in a way I got to go find her uh, as his reason for even why he's here and going up north. He's kind of already showing his cards here that he's admitting to himself that he's kind of given up and he's lost all hope and faith at this point. I think they do a really excellent job of capturing his feeling here, though, by dropping it, not using as much music or really any, keeping it nice and quiet for you to kind of have to sit there, almost uncomfortable in a way, uh, and understand that this person is not there and they're just kind of, only, they're, they're in their own head in a way. They're just kind of thinking, and there might not be much going on of being progressive at all, like in that head. He might just be kind of stuck where he is, but he's just kind of stuck to being who he is and being himself. We get the real first big step of almost moving on but at the same time not being able to of coming here and deciding that he's going to abandon his party but at the same time having that regret and not wanting to take that step forward and actually abandoning uh, or disbanding any of this ultimately i think he was able to do it but then he was holding another card so i don't know if it was his own like new card for being solo or if he actually didn't end up disbanding it i don't actually remember like like 
figure out exactly what happened but i think he did give it to her so i'm assuming it's like a new solo one or something that he has uh he goes out of his way here to take a job though very dangerous job but the reason is because one he needs money but two he doesn't care at this point if this is a job that puts him out and takes his life from him what would be the purpose you know also i just want to talk about i'm very happy the man god wasn't involved here because this this just shows that he gave room for Rudy to kind of grow here without having to send him in a direction and be like, okay, you got to go find your mom now or okay, go here so that you can specifically meet these people so you can have this experience and do this. Instead, he left it all up to Rudy to be like, figure it out on your own or almost having faith like he's you're going to figure this shit out on your own and believing in him almost uh, and making him believe in himself in a way that this is a change that he made on his own and in a, a revolution almost that he had on his own. And I think that's really, really cool. Here we decide to end up just grouping up with the people that we were coming up north with despite Sarah not being into this idea at all. Sarah continuously here running her mouth over and over and has to basically be shut down and be told like, you can't keep doing this. Like back back before the other town you were able to, but when, when you're over here, things are different. People are going to be coming and going. Shit's going to get really bad. It's really dangerous. We can't really be, be acting like this and, and keeping a close circle with the way that we're operating. And we need to kind of rely and help out others when we have the opportunity to kind of putting her in her place. Which I really like. Uh, him realizing more and more that this is kind of like Eris. Now, I wonder, I'm assuming she's going to be like very similar to Eris in a way that everybody's going to kind of come around to her. Like she's, we don't fuck with her right now, right? Like at least I don't, like just because of the way that she acts. But then you're going to come around to her and be like, oh, she's actually not that bad. Especially at the end, like her being able to own up to, uh, you know, being happy that he saved her in a way and thanking him for it. But to me, I just, I don't know if I like the idea of like creating similar characters just to have them become the same thing almost, right? So I feel like it would be more fun for us to go a different direction with her character and have her stay like a complete piece of shit or have her just like, like die or something as a similarity to Eris. And then Rudy being able to see like, fuck, this could have happened to somebody that I truly like cared about like an incredible amount, which I mean, he probably still cares about these people that he's around here now, but different levels of course with arrows i think just like going a different route not saying that we actually have to kill her but just going a different route where he can kind of where we as the viewers at least can have like a real distinction between this 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 type of character instead of making her just like the same I think would be a bit cooler for us to see him being able to see Ghislaine and Eris kind of walking together in a way that it was almost like this type of situation. Like a master and student, but also like older sister, younger sister kind of thing, which I think is really, really cool. Uh, similarity I wasn't really getting. We got some really great backgrounds and stills this episode too, which is something that I, I complained about <laughs> last week. Uh, and I said I did not like it all within the, the episode zero. I did look into it a little bit or just like read some stuff that I saw and apparently it was like heavily outsourced so I'm assuming it was probably like a not very high on the the importance radar here or they just kind of also like last minute decided that they wanted to throw something together for that because I wasn't like impressed in the slightest with like almost anything in it and it looked kind of off to me especially the micro shakes within the camera were atrocious and I, I could not focus on the subs the whole time this episode there were a few I noticed but it wasn't that bad overall though the, the production quality of this episode was a lot better which we're going to see in a moment here as we kind of skip along but a lot better we have to devise a plan exactly what's going to happen and Sarah shoots down like every fucking option that we have because she's like, dude, you're just going to get in the way. Her trying to basically keep him out of things almost, which is which is really fucked. And it's going to cost people at the end of the day if she continues to act like this, the people around her because of how powerful and important that he is. Uh, and also her overconfidence in her own abilities and the people around her. Uh, it's going to cost her at some point if she doesn't you know, change up and and realize that things can actually go wrong. We end up meeting up with some bears. We got Buddy blowing up shit. It looks pretty cool. Rudy slows him down to kind of help us out. Everything seems a little too easy until he starts realizing that the mud bears are showing up. And these things look all right out. They're huge and they're, they're going to absolutely fuck us up. Which at this point, Rudy takes the step forward. Being a man, you know, being like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be the one to help. But mm, can't really do it. And instead just kind of freezes up at this moment and realizes this is my opportunity to end it all. I can, I've already lost so much. Let me give up. Let me just, let, this is it. But we don't want that, do we? And he, deep down, doesn't really want that either, which is why it's absolutely perfect at this moment when everybody comes and basically surrounds him and fends off and kind of protects him and does everything that they can. And him being like, why are you doing this? Why are you like, why are you not just running away? Why are you protecting me? Like somebody who's just standing here, who's new, who you don't even know or have a real relation or connection to. What exactly are you doing? And we get a, a 
fascinating sequence right around here where everybody is kind of spinning around them and and I, it's really really cool i love the way that they did this almost like everything's still moving around you it's not just on you people and things within this world don't just sit still specifically for you and they're going to constantly be be moving around and changing and having these these different opportunities such as you see all these people who have these different abilities and in, in impact specifically on this fight and being able to see with all the different colors and all the different powers and magic and everything that people can do it's really fascinating but being able to see all this kind of just revolving around him putting him almost into the center and having to actually witness all of this shit happening gives him an uneasy feeling and gives him like these these bad feelings in his mind because he's like what is exactly stopping me because at this point he's starting to realize wait there might be some joy in this there might be a reason to keep going there might be a reason for me not to just give up and do this and he starts feeling the excitement and the energy that you get from adventuring and being put in these these situations and being really tested uh, with these other people that you can grow close to and have these bonds with and everything and i think i think it's really fascinating for us to see it and at this point he realizes with everybody kind of getting fucked up hold on i i i've been being stupid this whole time it, it's my chance to do something and unleashes absolute insane fucking magic on everything but absolutely it was such a great sequence at this point being able to finally extend a handout and being able to extend it at least for help but also to in agreement that he understands he needs other people around him too he can't do everything alone but he also needs to move forward and form connections and things like this for things to go well in his life no matter how much it hurts at the end of the day to do something like this with how red everything in his hand is from being probably fucking frozen but also it could be the blood and things from the things that he just killed sarah finally being able to come forward and say something positive for once big shocker be able to put a smile on rudy's face his voice also changed instantly at that moment have you felt some life kind of finally come back into him uh, we get a good moment the guild kind of winning everybody over by buying things for the, which is which is really really cool and then the final moment where rudy kind of starts realizing and putting things into pieces i i was confused at first why he kept reaching in his bag or, or his head was hurting or whatever it is and it makes me think like every time something like that was going on and he wanted to like calm himself down he was using the memory here of roxy basically to kind of keep him him composed in a way at least that's kind of how i'm reading it off here i don't know if that's how it was the entirety here or if he has some underlying thing that i'm not remembering or just started occurring like coming up uh but him also being able to realize what the fuck have i been doing this whole time and starting to put all those things, those lessons that he's learned and he's been taught over and over by these people who are very important to him, finally be able to put those to use and into action and actually apply those uh, to the things he's doing and not give up on everything because he still has people around him. He still has life. He still has these memories, these people such as Sylphie that he has to go find and he has to meet and make sure that they're okay, that he hasn't seen in all these years that are very important to him. It's a very, very big thing. Also being able to hear, as he says, I've had it worse before. I, I've, I, it's been, I've been down bad before. This isn't anything, you know, I, I can't resort back to what I was before. And I have to take this step forward and finally move. And then being able to signify that with the, the burning of Eris's hair and being able to move past finally and, and stop this thing that he's being held up on and person he's being held up with in a way, be able to take that final step forward, similar to how she kind of was realizing that she can't be stuck forever, kind of sitting back like that she needs to become her own person in a way and she needs to move forward this is an opportunity for him to finally be able to do that and being able to light this this memory this last thing that he almost has of her away uh, really really beautiful kind of moment next time we'll have forest in the dead of the night where exactly we're going to take things from there i i don't really know i'm assuming he's just going to continuously move forward and, and be on a better path hopefully apply the hard work and the, the use of these people that he met uh that he can kind of form relationships with now and learn as much as he can to be able to ultimately track down his mom and hopefully be able to find her at the same time might result in us being able to meet up and find selfie at some point too so i'm very excited for all that to kind of come forward here i feel like this this arc specifically though has a a really good Good opportunity here or at least this first core uh to be like not the whole show hasn't been because it kind of has but this like can really be crucial for the the mindset and the determination almost uh and the growth of who rudy is as a person and really begin to distinguish him a lot more from where he was in his previous life well, he's already been able to make like big strides, it feels like, of being able to just like morally kind of move past in certain ways and do things that he ha wasn't able to uh, before. I feel like this is really that big chance for him to get himself out of that and leave absolutely everything in his past behind him. And all that, I feel like, can really come forward within this arc. Uh, but I'm assuming there'll be, of course, few underlying things that are going to last throughout life at some point. But I'm assuming we can we can knock a lot of this out if he 
really puts his fucking head down and gets to work. So I'm, I'm very excited to see where this goes. Absolutely love this episode, though. I think it was so good for such a, a big point to kind of shift us forward and really being able to see a look into his mind of where he's at. I think like the big idea behind this episode, though, is something that I've always kind of resonated with, which is a, a saying, at least that I've always said. I don't even remember the first place I heard it or where it was, but it was always the idea that like when people start saying things like this is like the worst the thing ever, or this is like rock bottom in a way it's like things can always get worse the fact that you're alive is a good enough starting point right it can always get worse it might not be tomorrow it might not be a year from now it might not be 10 years from now but it, shit could get worse but at the same exact time it might not be tomorrow it might not be a year from now and it might not be 10 years from now shit can always get better and there's always opportunity for that as long as you're willing to do whatever you can in your power to kind of make that happen. I think there's a chance. That's going to be all for me. Absolutely love this. Very excited to see what's going to happen next week. Please leave any comments though about this episode, certain things that you thought of, what you, whatever. If I was completely off track on certain things, correct me where I was wrong. Please don't spoil anything though. What exactly this episode meant to you or certain scenes that you really liked. Are you very excited for the rest of the season? Just anything. Let me know. I'd really love to read them. I'll be back for episode two next week though. You guys have a good one. See ya.